Hey everybody, it's a mailbag. Along with a Christmas present. Along with a really good deal. It happens to be... filled with some other really good deals. It's mailbag. So, the first thing we have come from Amazon and I ordered this and got it relatively quickly. Let's take a look at what we got. We have the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, Vilros starter kit. And I do not own any Raspberry Pi 4s. I own a bunch of 3s. I own a bunch of 3s and 3Bs and some original Raspberry Pis and maybe the occasional 2 but I don't have any fours, and um, I have a reason for buying this, but let's take a look. This is the Vilros kit. This is the one with four gigs of RAM. Uh, I figured if I'm gonna go, I might as well go somewhat big on the four gig model. And uh, you've seen these before. I don't need to do a total breakdown of the Raspberry 4, but you've got uh, USB 3, you have this uh, USB-C connector, which I'm not a fan of, you have these little tiny HDMI connectors, which I'm not a fan of, but I am a fan of more power, baby. So we will see how this thing performs. I'll come back to that in just a second. It did come with the HDMI cable that has the, uh, what do they call it? Is it mini or micro? Uh, it does not say, I think it's called micro HDMI. I don't know, something like that, but the tiny HDMI connector. We have, oh, it does come with a second one that's just an adapter, so that's great. I can actually do dual monitors on this. And uh, so we have a case. This is a little bit nicer than what I was expecting. This is a metal case. I didn't really give much thought to what kind of case I was going to get. I'm just going to rip it. There we go. So this is an actual metal case with a fan in it. And I, I've not read good things about the fan, but it is there. And we have some little heat sinks and a little Allen wrench slash Phillips screwdriver. Looks like a total piece of junk. And yeah, I mean, the case itself looks really nice. So I'm gonna set that aside. And we have the USB-C uh, power supply with a power switch on it. So the question is, why did I get this? Well, I've been doing some thinking. I've been talking to some people in Discord. And when you look at something like a Raspberry Pi Model 3, Everybody advertises it as a $35 computer, but you definitely need a quality power supply. You definitely need a quality uh, SD card, and you definitely most likely want some kind of case for it. So by the time you're at that, you're in something like this roughly $55 or $60. And so my contention was that at that price point, there is another option that may make sense for some people who don't necessarily care about the size and might want a little bit more power. And that is something I am testing in another video. And this is an HP thin client computer. And so it is obviously bigger than the Pi, but it is also more powerful. And in this situation has a 256 gigabyte SSD. They're both silent. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going over the details because I'm gonna save that for the video, but I figured if I compared these two at the all-in $60 price point, I would like to compare the all-in $80 to $100 price point and see how they both work. So, stick around for some hot Raspberry Pi talk and some comparisons in a future video. Moving on, we have this package, which I know came from eBay that a client had sent to me. I'm not trying not to cut the thing. Let's see here. Come on, baby. Oh, we got... I knew that was a bad idea. We're going to have asbestos all over my desk. This... <coughs> this is a USB fingerprint reader by Digital Persona. And the... Uh, the glass is definitely kind of fogged up on it. This one is used. I'm a little disappointed in that. And uh, this is the 40, the URU 4500 fingerprint reader made in China by Digital Persona. And the reason why I have this is that when you get something like this, 
This is a uh, an Arduino type fingerprint sensor, and these things work in kind of a way that you wouldn't expect. They store and do all the matching of the fingerprints on this actual device. So if you have 10 of these devices, you would actually have to register your fingerprints at every one of these devices. This does some kind of magic to get this stuff into the cloud. And so um, I want to do a little bit of tearing down and figure out how this works and consider writing some biometric based cloud uh, authentication. And so I'm kind of interested in seeing how this thing works and what it spits out and how it does the matching. So uh, this is the Digital Persona USB fingerprint reader. I'm excited to play with this over the next week or so. This next one is something I asked for for Christmas and have waited to open it until I could share it with you guys, which I feel like is pretty festive and generous of me. This is uh, a sign that I'm getting old. I, I have very, very good vision, uh, but I am starting to struggle with some things up close, especially super tiny things, especially like little SMD components. And so this is a clamp light up magnifying glass. And so this thing is wasn't too, too expensive if I remember correctly, but is very well reviewed on Amazon. And so kind of excited to play with this thing and see what it does, especially for soldering. I may have it over here at this desk for some mailbag videos so that you guys can zoom in and see some components and stuff with me. But let's take a quick look at it. So it looks like this is just gonna, man, there might be an intermediate piece in there somewhere. Maybe I'll have to read the directions. Ah, goes this way. I see what you're doing. So this thing will come on here this way. I don't know that I'm going to be able to clamp it on this desk with this overhang right now. So I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about actually getting it clamped. But we have the light. And I did read a little bit about people not loving this design right here. If I don't like it, I'll fix it. Oh, so we have two different light... Oh, I just hit my head. We have two different light temperatures. This looks like a warm temperature, and this is a cooler temperature. I'm going to see if I can get this in focus here. But you can see the... Yeah, it's pretty good. I, I know the camera isn't doing it justice. It's, I wouldn't say it's pretty good. I would say it's excellent. Like the optics are excellent. The lighting is excellent. And I think for my purposes, this thing is going to be fantastic. I might just have to develop some other way to mount it. In fact, what I may do, if you look at this, that's pretty bright. Uh, let me turn the light off. If you look at this, this is just a little peg here. Um with a little screw that holds it in place. So I might just drill a hole somewhere where this thing can plop in multiple places around my shop. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll test that obviously in a piece of wood. But this is the magnifying glass by Lan Cossack. And uh, in my initial testing, I am very, very happy with how that works. Thank you, Kim. Focus. The next thing. The next thing we have is this Pelican 1490 case, and I bought this at a yard sale for $2. So, it does not have the key, and it does not have the top foam, but it's a Pelican case, and it feels good, it feels solid, it's got this fiber reinforcement, and uh, let me get this stuff out of the way so you're not distracted by the other goodies. But it does have this bottom foam down here, and it would be great for a project. And so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll build things, maybe I'll pop a picture of one up, but uh, things like Raspberry Pis and routers and stuff like that in cases for travel. And it's, it's going to be hard to beat a $150 Pelican case for 2 bucks. So I'm super stoked about that. I'm sure I can find a key or not even care about a key. But that, I guess that side, that is the Pelican case for $2. The 
The next thing I have is from Rex Qualis, and I don't normally actually stock a ton of discrete components with me, so um, I thought this is kind of neat. And what I thought was really neat about this one, and this is either a great idea or a terrible idea. I haven't decided yet. I'm, so far, I've been leaning toward a great idea. But all of these things are actually individually packaged in little labeled containers. And uh, the good thing about that is that they are not going to jump over the little boundaries of a of a common container. So this thing contains uh, 696 capacitors in 24 vo uh, values and uh, different voltages and things like that. So I did not have a set of capacitors. Uh, maybe I had one set, but I, I don't have a ton of them left. And so I am very happy to have a nice little set of capacitors to add to my collection. The next thing I got are these six little individual kits. I didn't realize at first they were going to be individually packaged, but they are individually packed breadboard wires. And I should grab a breadboard. So this is my collection of male-to-male -male jumper wires. Yes, primarily male-to-male. -male. These are male-to-female, but uh, I get them in 10 centimeters, and there's some 20 centimeters over here, and these are 30 centimeters, and then I, these are 20. Uh, I really like these kind that have the molded heads on them. I, I've generally thought they were a lot better quality than the ones with these uh, DuPont shells on them. But the one thing about them, especially when you're doing male to male just on the jumper, just as jumpers on your breadboard, is that they're not very neat. And as you get piles of these things, uh, your breadboards just begin to look like a rat's nest. If you've seen my video where I hooked up all, uh, what was it, 40 some sensors onto one. Arduino, you could see the absolute rat's nest of wires I have. And I, I encourage you to check out that video. That was kind of a fun project. But this is kind of neat. And I'm sure you've seen them before. And I always thought, when I first saw them, I thought the people were actually just very neatly cutting wires. I didn't realize they sold them like this. This is taped shut also. Uh, they definitely don't want it to pop open, which I can appreciate. Let's get that knife out over here. Okay, there's there, there's there. Okay, so the way these things work, they come in, looks like there's, uh, I don't know, maybe four or five different sizes. And these little things will jump from one to the other in a nice, neat, tight to the breadboard form factor. And so uh, obviously you're probably not going to jump from this to an Arduino with it, but for building your actual circuit on the breadboard, I think these things are brilliant. And they were pretty cheap, so I'm happy to have them and add them to my wiring collection. I also love that these are individually packaged and I will probably keep some of these sealed and if you come visit my shop you may wind up coming back with a set of these things because uh, they're nice little gifts. Moving on, this isn't something I got in the mail, but these are something that I think is worth pointing out. Home Depot has these on sale right now. They are two for 20 bucks and they are um, very cool tape measures. Now, I am a little bit of a tape measure snob. Occasionally, you'll see me use a Ryobi one or I'll use a Harbor Freight one, primarily if I don't care. But in general, my tape measure of choice has always been the Fat Max. Now, one of the problems with these is that, and with all tools and things like that, is that around Christmas time, they'll come out with some, or Father's Day, they'll come out with some junky ones that are cheaper imitations of these. So when you buy something like this, you really got to check it. You really got to check for the quality and just just uh, even go back to the actual tool section and grab one that is twice the price. And even though it may say Fat Max 25 feet, it may not be the same quality. This is a very good Fat Max. But a couple years ago, I bought these and they were okay. I mean, these are 16 foot little Milwaukee ones. I like them. I gave some away as gifts. And uh, compared to the Harbor Freight ones that most people have, these are great. But then I stumbled across these. And it's pretty rare that a tape measure actually has any kind of features other than just strength and stuff like that. But I thought I would show you what makes these different and why I like them. So the first thing is that when you look at the numbers, I mean, the numbers are just incredibly bold on these things. And the old ones were good. But the new ones, you can read from across the room. I mean, they're, they're fantastically bold. The other thing they have, and if you've ever tried to do something under a table, you may appreciate this. They have the numbers on the back the entire way. 
they have the numbers written on the back of the tape measure. And that is a great feature. And uh, I love that. The other thing they have is you'll see almost every tape measure has some kind of little stop thing like this. But one of the things they have in this that I really like is that the bottom of the tape measure is open. Now we'll see, that's not good to do that upside down. We'll see how long this holds up, but I really like the ability to just grab the tape measure right here and stop it wherever I want. And you're not gonna cut your hand and you can just gently kind of let the tape measure go back in. I think that's cool. The fourth thing about this thing that I really, really like, or the last thing that I really, really like is the fact that this end is magnetic. And so um, when I am working, in fact, like I was in my garage, I was measuring from my washer to another wall. I just throw this thing out there and it'll just stick to the washer and um, the, you know, I can just walk the room. And uh, it has a pretty decent pull strength to where it's not gonna just fall off. And so uh, for 10 bucks a piece, maybe buy one for yourself, give one as a gift. Uh, they're kind of hard to pass up right now if you live near a homeless despot. I am going to let you in on a little tip that I don't tell very many people about, and I may regret telling you guys about this, but you've all seen those end caps where they have the clearance, and there's usually stuff out there, and those things are kind of so-so deals, but in my experience, at Home Depot in particular, some of the best deals are stuck in the electrical tools section, and uh, these were 250 and this is what makes these things different. I have a lot of wire strippers, so these go from uh, 10 gauge to 18 gauge on the solid side. These go from 10 to 24 gauge. I don't use these a lot for stripping. I use these more for crimping on the end. But what's really neat about these, and at 250 a piece, I bought a second set, is that these will crimp up to, or these will strip up to 26 gauge stranded. And they've got a good spring action to them and just they've got a nice little grip at the end and for makers these are very nice strippers i've enjoyed this i've had this set out for a little while um, they're definitely not as heavy duty i have clines and stuff like that these might be clines uh, uh these are idea but i have some clines some of like that but they're not as heavy duty as clines but i tend to use them for just smaller maker stuff. And so this is a really great set for, especially for 250 on clearance. And I'm telling you, I find clearance hidden in the electrical section all the time. The other thing I have, and I thought I brought another one with me, but this is one of those uh, non-contact meters. Let me go ahead and open this one up. Okay, so normally I buy more expensive versions of these. I'll have a Klein or something like that. And uh, and some people disparage these things, and the first thing I want to say is you should always work on electricity as if it's live, and you should never put your life in the hands of something like this that costs $1.50 on clearance at the Home Depot. But these are very cool tools to just quickly go up to something. Let me see, is it on? Quickly go up to something. I appreciate that this thing has a power light that's always on, and it will tell you that it senses current without actually going inside the box. It also has a little tiny flashlight, which is kind of cool and handy to have. I wear this around my neck nearly all the time when I'm doing electrical work. And it's just really handy to have something like this, just a quick check for voltage. And then again, you still want to work on it as if it's live. You still want to lock out, tag out, have the breaker off, don't take any chances, all those other things. But this is a very cool tool and a very handy tool to have. And they're worth every bit of $15 to $20, which is what they normally cost. But I picked this one up for a buck fifty at Home Depot. And last but not least, we have uh, another two dollar yard sale find. This looks like a hundred, a uh, hundred, and let's see if they're cat, rated as Cat Six. These are Cat Five E RJ Forty Fives, and yeah, there's a hundred in here. And then I also got this decent uh, cable stripper, and this one looks like it's made for like RG Six coaxial cable. This is made for Ethernet and. Uh, let me test this thing here. So um, I love these connectors, especially if they're spaced right. I haven't cleaned this up yet. It's a little, a little grungy, but um, if I cut the end off of this, something like this is just fantastic for stripping this wire. You run it around there and not even the slightest nick on these little cables in here. And so um, something like this is just a great tool to have. I picked it up for a buck. I also picked these up. These are uh, 
they're, they have a brand name on them, and they just felt a little bit higher quality than the normal RG45 connectors. I'm going to do a video on uh, what I carry around in my networking bag, but the way you can usually tell is that, is these things. If, if you've got junky connectors, these things aren't going to have the same kind of spring to them, and, uh, and that little tab is going to break off fairly easily. But when you get some quality connectors, you can feel this has a lot of kickback to it. So I paid a buck for the whole hundred of them. So that is my mailbag. I hope you had a great holiday season and I will talk to you in the next video.